Okay, let's start this. Let's go. In 2011, a video dropped on YouTube. The video allegedly showed a authentic grey alien that was in some sort of facility, footage that had been released leaked by some official government employee. We don't know. And it circulated and it was huge. And quickly people said it was fake, it was a hoax. Other people said it was authentic, it was real. There was a big divide and lots of arguing backwards and forwards since. A little bit of analysis, but not a great deal. Now fast forward to 2025 where we are today. And now we've got some technology and some software that can help us look at this. Now I've got no skin in the game. When I first saw this, I thought it was probably fake and I moved on. My friend Tom Vernon over at Tom Vernon UAP, he did a trial of um, Skinny Bob video. It was really interesting, but again, it didn't really come up with a conclusion at the end of it because it's really hard to say. So I thought, let me jump in the ring and see what I can do. I'll use some forensic analysis on this. We'll chuck it through AI. We'll do as much analysis as we can and see if we can come up with something. Is it authentic? Is it a very elaborate hoax? So let's start off with initial observations and movement. What we're trying to do here is decide if this is CGI or AI as we now refer to pretty much everything, or if this is some kind of model or puppet. Now looking at the movement of the shoulder and the fabric first, the clothing moves in sync with the shoulder movement. It suggests the clothing may be part of a 3D model, not separated fabric. We can see that movement quite clearly. Now the blinking, if we're looking at that, it does look authentic and it's a damn good model or puppet. The lighting is good and we do see that the shadow and depth of movement in what we'd expect from skin and tendons around the eye socket if it were made of what we expect from biological materials, soft skin over fatty tissue, muscle and bone. The timestamp is an overlay. This is far more modern and it is not part of the original footage. This has been added afterwards. Motion vector analysis. Using optical flow, I tracked pixel movement between frames. The result, well, low uniform motion, head turns, no secondary motion, no clothing sway, no breathing twitch. That's what you expect from CGI or a puppet, not a living creature. Now let's look at blinking average intensity. I tracked the eye region intensity over time. In real footage, blinking causes a sharp drop in brightness, but this video, there is almost no change. It just sort of toggles. And on the screen is some of the GPT-4 technical summary points of note when running this through the LLM. In summary, there are some red flags, but also some points of note that suggest it isn't CGI from 2011. Entropy matches camera sensor video, not CGI, and lighting also not easy to match with CGI from back then, so certainly not consistent with CGI. When I've enhanced this, it's easier to see the facial movements and micro movement in the skin attached to the blink or the movement of the shoulder, but again, it's not substantial either way. The tests I ran include FFT, spectrum analysis, blink intensity fluctuations, motion vector smoothness, edge frequency content, lighting consistency, and timestamp overlay authenticity. You can pause or screenshot the screen to get an idea of the results, comparing what we expect from real footage, what was observed in this footage, and our likely interpretation of those results, if you're into the detail. I also ran this through one of my favourite pieces of software called Image Detect, which I run everything I get sent through as my initial due diligence when deciding what to share more widely. We really do need to get on top of fake footage or AI created footage and images being shared on social media. It's hard to spot, but software and apps like this can really help. Image Detect says this is likely 1% probability it's AI generated. If you want to do this kind of analysis, these tools are really useful. You could also use Sensity and Attestive, which are also great for the same job. Now then, let's move on to Ivan0135. He created the YouTube account on the 14th of April 2011. Interestingly, only a few days before the famous footage, also known as the dead alien footage from Siberia surfaced on the 19th of April 2011. Just four days earlier, in fact. This one later lost a lot of credibility and was assumed a hoax. 
but it's interesting what else was happening on YouTube with alien misinformation and very elaborate hoaxes around that same time, especially allegedly out of Russia. Ivan also posted three other videos all depicting scenes of alien bodies, a crash site, UFOs in the sky and scenery. As many have pointed out, this would have been extremely expensive to put together for no monetary benefit. No YouTube monetization at the time and certainly not having any effort to cost to profit benefit ratio. In layman's terms, this would have been hella expensive and technical for no apparent benefit. No accolades, no Emmy for set design or makeup artistry, nothing. But again, we see and hear the same dub sound in the background and the same filter or overlay effects, this sort of grainy old film style. And as my friend Tom Vernon pointed out in his video, The Trial of Skinny Bob, if you want people to see this information and you've gone to extraordinary lengths to leak it, if it's real, why would you remove data by adding a filter and a fake audio track? And let's focus on the name and 0135, Ivan. Who is Ivan? Now, can we learn anything from that name or the numbers as some kind of code or breadcrumbs? Well, Ivan's been the most popular name in Russia at the time second only to Alexander. So if you wanted to stay anonymous, then you'd pick a name. That's the most common. Equally, if you wanted to appear to be from Eastern Europe, or in fact, Russia specifically, you'd probably go for a name that stands out as Russian. We don't learn much from that then. What about the number 0135? Well, if we run it through coordinates on GPS, uh, as an initial reference point, it would be West Africa or Gabon. Not particularly well known for UFO history, not directly linked anyway. Could be coincidental. So I've cleaned up this footage as much as possible. I've added nothing, no AI, just removed noise and increased the brightness and definition of the shades to show the facial movements and the creases of the clothing to try and provide a little bit more clarity in the movement. Ultimately, what we can say from the data that we have is that this isn't AI, it's not CGI of the day. It is real footage. That's not to say it's not a model or a puppet of some kind, but it is a real thing. What's confusing and of concern for the authenticity of the footage being an alien being is the added filter and soundtrack and the added timestamp that doesn't match up and the movement of the fabric and the blinking. It suggests that it doesn't conform to biology as we know and understand it. But then, if it wasn't human, perhaps it wouldn't blink like we do, and the fabric wouldn't move like ours. If it was advanced technology and some super high-tech fabric for the space travelers, who knows? What I find incredibly important and compelling though, is the cost to put something like this together, and the other videos of UFOs he posted within days, and the scenery and set design that hasn't been yet debunked, potentially costing incredible amounts of money to put together. Remember, there's no DALI or Midjourney or GPT-like software back in 2011 to help with text to video. This would have been model building, puppet building, never to be seen or used again. No financial benefit or income in doing so, and no one ever coming forward to claim responsibility for the exceptional work. For what? For a hoax? For a laugh? It just doesn't make sense, even today. I think it's really, really... I'm not going to say. What do you think? You tell me in the comments. It's... It's a... What is it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's my conclusion. I just don't know. It's either an incredibly elaborate hoax. Or... 